morning, <clears throat> almost afternoon, Cape Cod. We are now at the uh, one Liberty port we've wanted to go to for the entire deployment. And uh, again, I've got to put out some basic rules that uh, we all have to follow. And once I get through the basic rules that we all have to follow out here, I'll go through some of the things that are specifically uh, of interest to all of you here in Thailand. First and foremost, as in Dubai and Bahrain, there is no status of forces agreement. What that means is, quite frankly, if you get in trouble in Thailand, uh, we can only ask that they let you go, but they're under no obligation whatsoever, and you will be tried by Thai law. And I'm sure that Thai jails are not like our jails back in the States. Uh, the easy way is not to get in any trouble, and you, you're not going to have a problem. However, that's, however easily said that may be, the last time I was here on Ranger, we had a crew member kill a, or shoot a, a Thai police officer, and our crew member was in turn killed. So there is a potential for bad things to happen. And uh, the Thais, in that case, they didn't pursue it any because they had killed our crew member, so it was kind of tit for tat. But they're serious here. Now, the Thai police, there's two types of Thai police. One is the tourist police, and they have a flash on their arm that says, in English, says tourist police. They speak English. They can help you out. They can tell you where something you may want to see is, and they're the people you want to try to talk to. The regular police are not found uh, in necessarily in the, the touristy areas, but they're found when you get outside the tourist areas around Patong Beach, and those police are not likely to be able to speak English. So you may have a little bit more uh, difficulty communicating with them. But in any case, do whatever the police say, and the, the safe bet there is to stop when they say stop or yell at you loudly in something that you don't understand, it probably means stop. Uh, by the order of the USDLO in Bangkok, if you have a liberty incident while we're here in Thailand, that terminates your liberty for the remainder of your stay in Thailand. Okay, that's the bad news. Any liberty incident, that's the end of the drill, and we have those r rudder orders, and we can follow them pretty well. Another nagging problem is hotel bills. What happens is, you buy your hotel, and quite frankly, I'm going to get to hotels in a second. Hotels are very, very, very reasonably priced here in Pattaya. You get to your hotel. It's a great deal. You discover that you have a mini bar inside the hotel, and it's great. You don't even have to leave your hotel room, and you can just knock down brewskis, knock down hard stuff, and the next morning it's refurbished again. The problem is, is a lot of sailors tend to forget that they have to pay for that, mini bar bill and it's a significant amount because it's significantly more expensive buying through the hotel in that mini bar than it would be out in town and you get hit with a, a major league bill at the end of uh, the stay here in uh, Patty uh, in, in Phuket the problem then becomes that uh, what we'll have to do is we'll have to make good on your hotel bill uh, at the end of on Friday when the day we leave and if we have to make good on your hotel bill in other words if you walk your check uh, we'll have our legal officer down at the uh, beach guard, and he'll pay the bill, and you will immediately pay the bill when he gets back on board. Uh, the USDLO, the, the captain from Bangkok, he will negotiate the bill, and if it's a fair bill, that's the end of the drill. He'll pay for it, but it will cost you, listen to me very carefully, it will cost you liberty in Singapore. You will not go ashore in Singapore. So I give that to you as a, as a heads up, and it's an easy, easy, easy problem to avoid. If you get a hotel, if you drink from the mini bar, before you settle up, you make sure that all your bills are paid. All right, transportation. We're going to have buses running continuously from the pier to Patong Beach. There will be a stop midway uh, in Phuket City. The buses will stop there for a few minutes, and you can get off and, and, and play around in Phuket City, and there's a reason why you might want to do this, and I'll get into that later. And then it'll go on, the bus will continue on to Patong Beach, where the lion's share of the liberty that you'll be interested in doing will be had. Um, the total distance is, uh, I think it's a 40-minute bus ride from the pier to Patong Beach. So plan on 40 minutes to get from one place or the other. Also plan on being there early enough to get a bus and to ride in. Liberty boats will, will have a continuous uh, run of Liberty boats, uh, at least to get the initial surge off, and then we will settle down to a, 
uh, a more regular uh, Liberty boat run, and they're working the details out right now. However, the boats will only run from 6 a.m. until 2 a.m. in the morning. 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. We will not have 24-hour service. So make sure if you're coming back, you want to get here early enough that you can catch an early boat in if you're in the, the, the following day's duty section. If you come rolling in on the target at uh, 10 minutes to 8 and expect to get a Liberty boat back to the ship, you might find yourself a little bit late getting back for duty. Uh, let's see, next one. Ah, that's right. The debarkation at the pier is an adventure. Uh, I can, after having had described to me, it's not quite an e-ticket at Disneyland, but you will be doing some clamoring to get on top of the top of one boat onto a, a brow that goes up at a relatively steep angle, particularly at low tide. Now you can you can get around that. Just make sure you leave and, and come back at high tide, and it's less of a problem. But the, uh, the thing that comes across loud and clear is you may not want to be really faced and to try to negotiate this. You want to try to be sober to go both ways. I'm not going to go into any more. You've heard all the venereal disease things. I'm, I'm only going to say one thing about that. And if, if you're going to get into it, uh, there's a gamut of diseases here fully available for anybody that wants to try them. Just practice safe sex. Enough said here. Next one, a big problem, big Big problem, drugs. I know 99.99% .99 of you don't do drugs, but there may be someone that's out there. There is no cocaine in Thailand. No matter what the guy that wants to sell you that white powder, there is no cocaine in Thailand. Instead, you get what's called grade four heroin. Now it is 98% pure. And Captain York, the U.S. DLO, has come in the last nine b months that he's been here, he has come down to Phuket to claim four bodies that snorted this coke. They, they just snorted it, and they just went uh, mortal right there and then. And he brings the bodies back, and he sends them back to mom and dad. And they get your, they get your insurance policy, and they can go out and buy the Porsche they always wanted. So enough, enough said there other than to say... The drugs are prevalent. We are very near the Golden Triangle, and don't do it. Water sports are super here. The dive shops, by and large, are absolutely 4-0. There are no bad dive shops. If you're going to do any diving, they're great. The parasails are 4-0. There's no problems there. And windsurfing, there's no problems there. If you want to windsurf, go out and discover what it is to fall off of a surfboard. Uh, that's a lot of fun. The parasails are a lot of fun. There are two that you stay off of. No water skis and no jet skis. No water skis and no jet skis. By USDLO order, American sailors are not to use the water skis and the jet skis. Whether, no matter what or how you use them, when you bring them back, you will have damaged the jet ski that belongs to the guy and you will have to pay for it. Now, some of the tricks that they use is the plug that you get about 100 yards offshore it sinks, you buy him a new $1,500 uh, jet ski. If it's a problem, it's going to be adjudicated. You will not leave Thailand until the problem is resolved. Now, that doesn't mean that you get to stay in the Patong Beach Hotel while it's in adjudication. You get to stay in the Thai jail while it's in adjudication. So there's no real... Uh, desire to, to, if you want to stay, that's not the way to stay in Thailand. Uh, we will have to leave you behind if you get in a bind. All right, I mentioned that the buses stop in Phuket City on the way to Patong Beach. They stop right at a place called the International Lapidary, which is a, a gem store, a jewel store. For those of you that are shopping, shopping um, addicts, it has a very, 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 very good very fair reputation for selling jewelry. The, uh, the key that uh, Captain York said was that the buys here in Thailand, there's only really two things that you can get a significant killing on in Thailand, specifically Phuket, and that is rubies and sapphires. Rubies and sapphires. Everything else, all the other gems come from somewhere else, and you're going to have to pay the cost of bringing them into Thailand, and you'll pay probably what you'd pay in any other location in the world but the real deals are in rubies and sapphires. 
The uh, gold that's sold here is sold at spot world, or world spot prices. Whatever the price of gold is, it's sold at that price. There's a, a real minimal fee for workmanship, and uh, very, very minimal. And the workmanship, according to Captain York, is pretty good. So you can make your own judge on that. Also, at the bus stop in Phuket City is the Thai phone exchange for making international phone calls back to the States. This is the best place to make phone calls back to the states. There are no extra tariffs. You will pay a tariff, and the tariffs can be high. I don't know how high, but um, the uh, attache said that they're high from the uh, uh, hotels. So if you make a phone call from your hotel room, probably the prudent maneuver for you to do would be to ask when you, when you call in, what's the extra charge for... Uh, an international phone call and find out how much it costs for every minute and, and, and compute it that way. So go in for, forearmed and, and with a little bit of extra knowledge. Okay, there's a real good hospital here in uh, Thailand. Shouldn't be a real major problem. In addition, uh, next to the beach guard in uh, Patong Beach, there's a, a marine police rescue squad nearby, so we should have that pretty well covered. Okay. Thais are extremely friendly people. They are very, very gentle people, and they genuinely like Americans. We are very popular people with them. They are happy to see us. Now, there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, we've always had really good relations with the Thais, but number two, and probably more importantly, and probably a little more benefit to us, this has been an exceptionally slow tourist season for Thailand. Because of the Gulf War, the tourist season, they have really been hurt so they are most grateful for us to be here and they're going to they're going to go out of their way to treat us really well so I can only say that if you're smart you'll reciprocate and treat them with as much or even more respect than you would have them treat you and you might find that you might genuinely have a lot of fun I'm not going to tell any sea stories but I became friends with a with a, a, a man in in Pattaya Beach Thailand uh, over the course of my career and I've gone back to his place numerous times and now when I go to Pattaya, through this friendship that's developed, I don't have to pay for my room because he owns a little apartment on the water and I can stay there. So you may, for those of you that are only have like maybe one or two years in the Navy, it might be benefit you to start making that because you can making those kind of friends now because it may come to pay you when, when you've been in the Navy as long as some of us life or dogs have been. All right, next thing, important stuff, the exchange rate, 25 baht equals $1. 100 baht equals 4 bucks, 500 baht equals $20. That's kind of a... Uh, now, why, why, why do I say that? Well, number one, we, we always like to know what the exchange rate is. But the kind of downside, unlike Dubai and Bahrain, the greenback is not the universal money source that we had there, where they would immediately change it into baht or whatever they... What were they in, in Bahrain? Durham's and... What were they in the other place? Dinars. They won't do that here. You may have them do it. They may do it, but you can't expect it like we did in Bahrain and Dubai. So you're going to have to exchange money. As you heard, the money's being exchanged at a 25 to 1 ratio down on the Mestex right now. And you should get pretty close to that when you uh, get into uh, Patong Beach. But the stores do want bot. It's easier for them. They just don't have to deal with a lot of stuff. All right. There are taxis, even as we speak. There are taxis waiting for us outside the pier. The normal run costs 300 baht, let's work this one out, 12 bucks to run from here to Patong Beach. Now, these are capitalists. These are pure freebooting capitalists out there, and they're going to want to try to charge more. Right now, according to Captain York, what they're trying to do is get 300 baht per head and fill the cab up so they're getting $36 a run instead of $12 a run. Again, you can negotiate it, but it's his cab. If he doesn't want to take you for 300 baht, he may want to wait for someone else, or he may just go, if you just say, hey, no, 300 baht for all of us, out of pure honesty. And these are pretty honorable people here in Thailand. They're not like many other countries. They do have a high sense of personal honor. He may just kind of fold up and say, okay, 300 baht, all of you, I'll take you. Uh, now, there are all these little buses. When I get into the beach, which is a long beach, it's a very long, narrow beach, Patong Beach, there are these little buses that run up and down the beach. The rule of engagement there is if you just jump in the back of the bus, it'll take you anywhere in Patong Beach. You have to know where to get off. 
for 10 baht, which is, let's work this one out real quick here. Oh, it's less than 50 cents. And you just hop in the back, and you drive up, and then you, you ding the little bell, and he stops, and you give him the 10 baht, and you get off, and you can do whatever. However, if you say to him, to this guy that's running this thing, can you take me to fill in the blank, then you have now entered into separate independent negotiations with him, and he'll say yes for 50 baht or 60 baht or 100 baht, and he'll take you there. But understand that if you ask him to take you there, you're, he's becoming a taxi for you, and he can charge you something other than the 10 baht. Okay, for the uh, golfers, for those of you that play golf, between Phuket City and Patong Beach, there is a superb golf course. It's absolutely first-rate, top-notch, uh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful golf course. Having said all of that, you probably get the idea that it's relatively expensive. The green fees are about $48 U.S., and it's about 10 bucks for your caddy, so you, can, you, get, you get out of it for about $60. If you're really addicted to golf, that's a way to get a fix. All right. As I said, there's not a lot of great deals on uh, um, purchasing here other than the jewelry, but you can do real well on clothing. Uh, you can get uh, the polo shirts and the Izod shirts and... Uh, all the other ones that have little things, animals running across, um, they're all fakes. You, know, you, have, you, you know that going in, but you knew you weren't going to get a polo shirt for $5 and have it be the real thing. The Benetton shirts are actually made in Thailand here, so if you buy the Benetton shirts, you may actually be getting a real, the real thing. So that's something to take into account. Uh, great quality Rolexes, all fake. But there again, too, you're not paying Rolex prices for the watches you buy here. All the Rolexes that you bought in... Uh, Bahrain or in Dubai were made here in Thailand, so you should be able to get them a little bit cheaper here than you paid for them in Bahrain or uh, Dubai. Now the most important information that you all want to know is the price of beer. Beer costs between 35 and 40 baht per beer. That's important. That, that gets everything, that really puts the exchange rate in, uh, in uh, perspective. Ah, yes. I think I mentioned this already, it's in my notes. If you welch on any of your debts and we have to take care of your debts on Friday before we leave and the lawyer will be, uh, Mr. Susha will be at uh, the beach guard taking care of your debts, you won't have any liberty in Singapore. You won't have to worry about spending any money there. All right, drinking water. Uh, at all the hotels and at the major restaurants, the water you're drinking is bottled water. If you drink the water elsewhere, um, there's nothing really wrong with it. You'll get what's called Bangkok belly, which is kind of like the Montezuma's Revenge or Tijuana Trots or any number of other things that can turn a perfectly good stay in an area into a perfectly uh, exciting one. Uh, stick to bottled water if you just want, or beer. Beer is, is, is good. Uh, I'm not advocating dr uh, alcohol abuse here, but, but go with a bottled water or beer. The food is superb anywhere. Whether you're getting it from one of the little noodle carts alongside the beach, one of the little vendors that's got the, a mom-and-pop vendor on the side of the road to the best restaurants, the food is absolutely superb. Thai food is exceptionally hot. Let me repeat that. Thai food is exceptionally hot. There are sauces. The sauces make it even hotter. So if you want to increase the octane, put some of the sauces on it. Uh, and now this, this is kind of, I don't know whether to believe this or not, but I'm, I'm going to say, the captain said you can get lobsters that are this large. They're, they're called Patong or, or Phuket lobsters, and they're, they're relatively expensive, but there again, too, the, you know, find out what expensive is. Expensive it may not be to us what it is to the people in town. The king prawns, they call them king prawns here, are the size of Maine lobsters. And the best bet is to go with the prawns because you're getting a couple of prawns that are the size of a Maine lobster. So that may be uh, something for you to look into. There is a USDLO prohibition against any Americans getting involved in kickboxing. Now, in some of the bars, they sometimes have kickboxing demonstrations and they usually, they'll get somebody that fancies himself quite the pugilist to step into the bar. And, uh, and a couple of things can happen. But the bottom line is no Americans from Cape Cod anyway 
are to get in any kind of kickboxing contests with uh, Thai nationals. Whether it's in the bar and they, they want you to do it or not, you don't do it. The two things happen. If you're a, truly a superb American pugilist, you'll probably kick the Thai and you'll probably nail him. If, but you're going to have to be very, very good, like Dr. Hanlon, for instance. Um, however, if you're not, and maybe you've had a few brewskis and you get in, you may get your teeth handed to you by this little 97-pound guy that does wondrous things with his feet, usually around your face. So, just avoid that problem. The next one, this is for all the guys to listen to, and the gals can kind of take a break on this one. There is this marvelous thing called a katoy. Now, a katoy is also known as a Benny Boy. And they are truly, truly, truly good-looking hammers. And they, the rule of thumb here is, if it's too good to be true, guys, it's probably too good to be true. And you might find that you're, not, you're getting a little more than you bargained for. And the, the key here is these guys, their makeup is even better than the gals. So if it's looking really fine, and especially if you've been drinking, you know, you, you've got beer goggles on, you may get a real surprise when you get back to the hotel. So take that for what it's worth, guys. Um, okay, next thing, the beach guard. And I'll, I'll get to the map here in a second and show you where the beach guard is, but it's basically center line in Patong Beach, about midway between north and south. There's a little room in there. And if you're out in town and you buy a couple of shirts and you buy a couple of other things and you're starting to discover you have a whole bunch of packages and you want to go to some of the entertainment in the evening, catch one of the shows, that kind of stuff, and you're saying, hey, I don't want to go all the way back to the ship, drop all my purchases off. I don't want to walk around pa uh, Patong Beach with my purchases under my arm. You can drop them off at the beach guard. Now, they're not going to take responsibility for them. You know, it's, it's your, your own risk, but there's a room back there that the beach guard guys stay at, and it's safe. It's relatively safe. Write your name on your package. You can drop it off there and then pick it up before well, you get on the bus to uh, go back to uh, the ship. All right, a couple of accommodations. Let me give you some ideas. The two best bets in Patong Beach are as follows. The Patong Beach Hotel and the Holiday Inn. Now, there's a couple of other ones that I'll give you so you can key on them. And let me give you some. The Diamond Cliff Hotel is absolutely the best hotel on the waterfront. It's going to set you back $52, and it's absolutely superb. It's 52, 1,300 baht. What you have to do is you show them your ID card, and you get this price, 1,300 baht for the, for the Diamond Cliff Hotel. It's located pretty well. Uh, in town, a little bit to the north north part of town, but it's 4-0. Holiday Inn is a little bit toward the south end of town. It's also really good. Patong Beach is dead center, and it's uh, only 700 baht, so that's, let's work our, our math out there. It's 28 bucks, something like that. Actually, about 28 bucks a night. So, that, you know, that's not too bad, between 52 and 28 dollars. Now, let me give you the names of some other ones. The, uh, let's see, Diamond Cliff Holiday Inn, Patong Beach, the Patong Resort Hotel is also super, it's, and it's 700 baht, so there again is $28. The Safari Beach Hotel is real good, and that's about uh, 900 baht. And there's the Patong Inn, and that's 700. So you're, you're looking at $35, so it's not going to break you. And there's, right now we're kind of in, as you probably gathered, if you were out in the rainstorm, this is not the ideal tourist season. The, most of the hotels are relatively empty, so you'll have them to yourself uh, to a very large extent. And those are the, those are the hotels that are really uh, superb. Let me give you the beach guard uh, number so that if you have to call the beach guard for any reason at all, you can call the beach guard. The beach guard, if you, if you have any kind of a problem, the beach guard can then call the White Plains and they can call us on channel 16, which will be monitored up on the bridge and we may be able to react to it. The Beach Guard office number is 321-301. And you just ask for the Beach Guard extension. What that does is the Beach Guard office is at the Patong Beach Hotel, and that'll, uh, that'll, they'll key it to the Beach Guard. All right, let's see what's next on the agenda. Tours. All right, let's, let me run through the tours. We have four basic tours. 
the number one tour, oh, the, I, love, I love it when I have to pronounce these names that I, the Fang Naga tour is $10, and it starts at 8 a.m. It costs you $10, it co we, we cover five bucks of that. I mean, we covered the extra five, it's actually a $15 tour. And you get breathtakingly beautiful scenery, an experience not to be missed. Enjoy a full day boat trip, cruising famous Fang Naga Bay. Ah, that's the famous Fang Naga Bay. You visit the Tam Lod Grotto. I, I, I live for this. The, uh, the Ping Khan Island, which was used for, as a site for a James Bond film. Pansy Island. Oh, this one I got to see. Pansy Island. There's a Muslim gypsy village built on stilts. And then you get to go to some place where they prepare seafood for you. And you get to see a grotto where there's a 100-year-old Thai temple. $10. Hey, it beats sitting in the hotel room. It's raining, I guess. You get the Phuket City Tour for $7.50. That's actually about a $12 tour. The Welfare and Rec picks up the rest of that. This tour takes you to uh, an ancient Portuguese uh, building in Phuket. You get to visit a tin mine, a beach, a marine biological research center, another gypsy village. I guess we've got a lot of gypsies around here. Uh, Promtep Cape and Phuket Hill. You also get to go around and uh, see some fascinating local shops and shopping. And in that regard, I will give you some gouge that I got from Commodore Barker from Fibron 1, and that is in Phuket. Uh, Phuket is like a real center for, is cashew nuts? Cashew nuts. And they actually do the, the shelling of the cashew nuts. There's a cashew nut factory in Phuket City, and I think you get cash, can get cashew nuts there for about a buck a pound. And if you're used to paying like $3 for 8 ounces back in the States, you, and you're into cashew nuts, this is a place to buy them. I thought I'd just throw that one in as kind of an aside. You can do that while you're shopping. The next one is the Thai Village Tour, and it's a, ch it's a chance to see spectacular show and handicrafts in a Thai Village setting. And Thai Village Phuket provides an exciting and comprehensive sampling of the life and culture of the Thai people. Villagers in the performance of folk dances, Thai boxing, martial arts, traditional ceremonies, and cultural features of the entire kingdom. This is probably the best bet tour of all, because it will give you an overview. It'll give you a thin veneer of knowledge of Thai culture, so that you can go back and actually have some appreciation for some part of Thailand other than just the bars on, on the Pad Thong Beach. So if you're going to go for a tour, that's the one that I would, that I would uh, opt for, because it will leave you with something that you will remain with you for the rest of your life. And the last one is a diving tour for you guys that are divers. Uh, you have to have your, is it Patty? And what's the other one? They take Patty and whatever the other one is other than Patty. Um, you have to have your, your, your dive. And uh, Mr. Chin is doing this down on the, it's $35. It's normally a $50. It's an all day one. You get two dives in. You get a morning dive. And I guess you get lunch there. Maybe you catch your own lunch. And then you get an afternoon dive and they take you out and it's first class diving all the way around. So that, that's $35 to you. The Welfare and Rec picks up the other 15 on it. All right, let's see. Now, let's get to the, uh, this is the one that we, we botched last time. We're gonna try to give you a little bit of an idea of what's going on here. All right, before I st get started, and you're looking at either my navel or my throat. This is Patong Beach here. Oh, I can't cover that up. All right, here we go. We good to go? Not yet. Hold it up higher. Are we there? Oh, oh, down now. All right. This is great. I'm going up and down, and they're they're going in the opposite. Are we there? Now I can't see it though. Now I have to do it backwards. Okay. Are we on? Right there is the Patong Beach Hotel. That's dead center in Patong Beach. That's sort of where everything is going to emanate from. And this is where all the really neat little bars. And I'm told that for those of you that, like Mr. Thomas and myself, are on a holy quest to find the perfect mango margarita, any one of about 100 of these beach thatched the roof type of bars serves the, the perfect mango margarita. They also have in some of the bars, in this area right in here, in the middle of this, they have uh, they show like old movies, and they show some first-run type of movies, I guess, on a screen while you're, you're dr sink, drinking your brewskis and looking out over the beach scenery, heavenly bodies and that sort of thing. And let's see, the Holiday Inn is down in this area, which is about the, the furthest southern extent of the area you want to go, right around about there. And 
The Diamond Cliff Hotel is located up here. And there's any number of other really super little hotels right in this area along the beach that are just 4-0. And you can go back, and there's one that sounds, this sounds really good, the Dog and the Duck Inn. If anybody goes there, let me tell, tell me what it was like. It sounds kind of interesting. But there's a whole bunch of them around here, and they're all available for you to go and uh, have a good time. And you can do all kinds of water sports out here, except the jet skis. All right, that's the end of the... Why don't you take a look at that for a second? That's the end of the official Site TV gouge. I guess we'll stand by for some... Oh, wait, hold on a second. I'm getting some rudder orders. Oh, bingo. Yeah, bingo. All right. This is by order of USDLO Thailand, and that is absolutely no operation of any motor vehicles whatsoever. You're still looking at that? That's okay. Okay, well, I'll put that down. There's a problem here. Then you're going to get out there, and there's guys with these Kawasaki 1500s and all these other huge motorcycles, and some guy that used to drive a little Honda 150 back in the States thinks he's, you know, John Wayne, or he's redoing his uh, Easy Rider uh, phase of his life. He gets out there, the roads are coral, and you lose control, and we, we have for years and years and years scraped sailors off the pavement and sent them back in body bags back home to mom and dad, and they get the insurance money and, and that, that drill. It's forbidden, no matter, especially after you've had a few brewskis, and I know you want to get out on your motorcycle and feel the wind in your hair, no way. No operation of any motor vehicle, specifically motorcycles, but including cars. There, it, the basic rules of driving in Thailand are, there are no rules. And so we're, we're not really, not only are there no rules, but they drive on the wrong side of the road. So it really complicates it for an American. So just don't drive. Take the little bus that goes up and down the beach here, or take a taxi. Oh, yeah, all right. The buses, I think, are going to go around the clock, pretty much. They're, they're setting that up right now. All right, the buses, the bus schedule is, is kind of neat. We didn't have that many problems when we were in Bahrain and when we were in uh, Dubai. Well, actually, we didn't have any buses in Dubai. Uh, the, the bottom line, I guess we did have buses in Dubai. The bottom line is the buses here, because it's a 40-minute drive, are actually kind of nice, and they actually serve alcohol on board the bus. Yeah, yeah, they do. I've got some people showing signs of amazement at the other side of the camera. We're not going to initially put shore patrol on there because your behavior, Cape Cod's behavior, was 4-0 in Bahrain. It was a lot of the other ships and the Marines that caused problems for us riding back and forth on the, the buses. If you want a good deal to go sour in a hurry, abuse it. And what we'll end up doing is we'll end up putting shore patrol on the buses, and we'll end up having to secure the, any uh, beverages sales on the buses and just make it a little bit uh, less pleasant for you. So go for the gusto, enjoy yourself, but maintain that high Cape Cod standard that we have done so far. Because quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the best liberty we're going to see this deployment. Singapore is going to be fun. There's no doubt about it. Singapore is a great place. and There's lots of things to do in Singapore. But this is going to be our absolute best four days of liberty. Don't take any chance to screw it up. If you really want to get faced, make sure you have a hotel room that you can go back to. And make sure you don't get larger than life where you have to get called. Because if there's a liberty incident, and you get brought to the beach guard or the Thai police pick you up and bring you home, that's it. You lose the rest of your liberty. It's, it's as easy as that. And I don't want you to do that because, quite frankly, some of my best memories of liberty in Westpac are here in Thailand. And this is my eighth or ninth, I guess this is my ninth time in Thailand, but my first time in Phuket. And it, it's only great. It's great and better than great. So don't screw it up for yourselves, all right? I'm going to take some questions now. What do you got, Command Master? Emails are wondering if, if I, I don't remember hearing anything about the power source. Are there curling irons in their hair dryers? Oh. Well, most of the hotels have them. Yeah, it's, uh, the question is, this is, this is, a, this is obviously a, a question that's of absolutely overriding importance to every female on board, and that is, what is the power source for curling irons and dryers for your, hair, your, blow, your blow dryers? I don't know, but they get a lot of people here, so you can probably bet that there's some kind of transformer or step-down transformer that'll work for you. Just go to your hotel concierge, and he'll probably hook you right up with that. That's important. Most hotels have same-day laundry service. Same-day laundry service in most hotels. 
if you have to, you know, you only have one shirt, they can do it for you. Next question. Okay. Reiterate the back bus. Both plans are to run from six to two. I did that already. One more time. Someone didn't get the word. All right. Everybody, pay attention. 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. is when the boats run. There are no boats at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. Okay. The boats stop at 2 a.m. You have a, you'll have to just kind of kick back on the pier for four hours if you get back at 2.08 or 2.10. Oh, the dress code. For those of us who have had to labor with long pants on for the last, how long were we in Bahrain? Too long. The dress code is as follows. Nothing vulgar, nothing, no gross t-shirts or anything like that, but shorts, t-shirts, shoes are fine. And bathing suits, whatever you want to wear, this is liberty. Now, uh, Flip-flops are, are, not, are not acceptable going to and from the ship, but if you're at your hotel room and you want to wear flip-flops to the, to the, to the beach, uh, that's your call. I'm not going to be involved in that. Uh, but you can't wear flip-flops on and off the ship. And, listen up, you have to meet our dress code for leaving the ship, all right? So you have to go out with standard Cape Cod uh, dress code for leaving the ship, and if you want to... I was going to say undress, but I guess I should say dress down after that. That's your call. And if you want to undress, that's okay. Uh, no, that's not okay. Yes. Oh, right. Give me the dates. Right. On Friday morning, on Friday at 1600. Thursday. Thursday? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. The key here is Tuesday morning, we're going to have flight quarters. So every member of flight quarters team and the fire party for flight quarters, their liberty is going to expire at 0800 so that, that we can man up for flight quarters on Tuesday the 4th. We get underway on Thursday at 1600, correct? And Liberty will expire at 1300 on Thursday. Uh, Liberty expires for the duty section at 745 every morning. It'll be a quick turnover, and the offgoing section can hit the beach. Yeah, with some sweepers, yes. Thank you. What's the next one? He hasn't, he hasn't said yet. So that, any word on the tours mustering, that sort of thing, will will come out a little bit later. We haven't picked up that yet. We don't have that knowledge yet. Oh, both. Wait a give, can you give your rudder orders on boats? What about boats? Over there, we can, we can rent boats. We can try and beach people for boat tours and stuff like that. Not a problem. But your rudder orders, if anybody hires a boat, come back out here. Oh, all right. Um, here we go. Okay. There are some speed boats that um, can... Uh, you can buy. You can hire some some guy in a speedboat to to dr bring you out to the ship. All right. It's a one-way trip. I will not have the speedboats hanging around off the ship. They can come in. They can drop you off, and they take off. Nobody leaves in a speedboat other than the the single speedboat that the ship is contracted for, that uh, is, uh, that that we have, a CO speedboat. The rest of us go off on on and off on li on Liberty boats. I, I, the thing I don't want, and I've seen happen, is these speedboats, these guys are targets of opportunity. They start uh, trying to make the landing and, you know, offer to take people off while everyone else is waiting for a Liberty boat. And then you have be people jumping the line to get on the, f the speedboat saying, hey, I'll, sp I'll spend a 200 baht to, uh, to, to ride in. And I don't want that to happen. So you can negotiate it. The speedboat comes in, and then he leaves. We, no, one will, no one will go on a speedboat leaving from here other than the official speedboat that we call by run, uh, by the CDO. No mail, no mail in Thailand whatsoever. The next mail call we'll have uh, will be in Singapore. So if you were expecting to see some mail, it's not going to happen here. Everything has been forwarded to Singapore, and there's going to be a lot of it in Singapore. Okay, credit cards. All right, credit cards. Credit cards can be used here with virtually no problem whatsoever. A couple of things to think about. Remember, 
at an exchange rate of 25 to 1, if you buy something for $8 US, it costs 200 baht. And if you put it on your credit card, it's going to say 200 baht. And their baht symbol is a lot like an American dollar sign. I think it's, it's, it's sort of like an American dollar sign. What you want to write on your credit card slip in, 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 in nice, legible writing is Thai bot. What will happen is the, what will happen is when it, you buy it for, let's say you buy something for a thousand bot, you write Thai bot on it. The credit card slip then goes into the bank here in Thailand and they credit it at the exchange rate for that particular day. So it may not go in for three or four days. So your, your exchange rate may be 25 to 1 today, and it may be 24 to 1 the day that it shows up. But the exchange rate will be applied by the bank. But for your records, so for instance, let's say you go out and you buy something at a jewelry shop for 3,000 baht, which isn't a hell of a lot of money, 120 bucks or something like that, and you get back to the States and you discover you have a $3,000 bill on your Visa card because it looks like a dollar and they might have pulled a little bit of a, a sly one on you, you're kind of OTL, but if it, it very clearly says OTL, out to lunch. Uh, if, you, uh, <laughs> if, if you have written Thai bot on it, you have a pretty good reclama to go back to Bank America and say, hey, no, I, that's Thai bot, it's written right there, all right? So that's how the credit cards work and credit cards are taken at all the major hotels and restaurants, et cetera. The bus schedule. Yes, yes. Okay, bus schedule. We've got four buses laid on initially for a, t a, t a fast turnaround, continuous to get people to Patong Beach as fast as possible. After the initial surge of Liberty Party is off the ship, we will probably go down to about an hour or half hourly schedule of buses running from here, one bus at a time, to Patong and back. Uh, and it, again, the buses drop you off at the uh, beach guard, and it'd probably be on the hour or half hour. That that you can pretty much count on. This is one of the master chiefs. Wondering what time Liberty calls. <laughs> oh, tell them, tell them, tell Master Chief to just keep calm. We have to answer a few more questions. Are there any more questions? You have two minutes because it's now seriously affecting my liberty. Anything? No, you don't get to go and leave. That was, oh, she's crying now. Okay, you can do it. What did the actual just say over to TV? He said, what time are you going to leave the Liberty Call? Are you guys listening or what? <laughs> and he said, it's going to be very shortly. As soon as he gets done with everything here, we get to listen to the All right, to for those of you, as soon as I possibly can get out of this chair and run to the 1MC, we'll put Liberty down. For those of you that are interested in Liberty Call, because this is really seriously affecting mine now. Anything else? Once, twice, launch them. Good. Good show. Good show. Was that okay?